Thanks unto the Lord. This is FaithWorks Live. Rebecca Haney is my name, uh, but you know that because we're old friends. And it's my joy to be with you, to look at what it looks like to live out our faith in this crazy old chaotic, pretty much Romans 1 kind of world. Um, and never has that been, I think, more fully on display, operative word, that the French Revolution has struck again, um, that as all eyes were turning globally, to the the event that's supposed to bring us all together to celebrate all the best in what human beings have to offer um, that is being hosted in France. France had a message, or so select elite in France had a message this year. You've probably seen it. So I'm just gonna say instead of liberty, equality, fraternity, the French um, national motto appears to be depravity, perversity without apology. Uh, and I uh, to speak to this subject, because I've waited a little bit to render my opinion, it seems like even Christians were divided on how to properly receive and how to properly respond. And one response that I think really hits the nail on the head comes from Mark Taps, and he is our special guest today. He is, you've probably seen his work. He uh, obviously with a front page mag, the column that we're talking about today is at Front Page Magazine, and we'll link to it down below so you can follow along. And he's also the Showman Fellow on Popular Culture for the mm -hmm. David Horowitz Freedom Center. It is our honor to have him on the airwaves with us today. Mark, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. It's my honor. Uh, well, it's a mutually honor. See, that's a great place to begin. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it looks like the beginning of a beautiful friendship, Mark. Sounds um, good. You spoke boldly about this situation, and I really appreciated that right off the bat. Um, the first response that I heard, just so in case anybody's been under a rock, um, the the giant parade, the giant event that's supposed to introduce the Olympics and again celebrate and unite and bring everybody together. Um, for some reason, the message that the the committee that decides these things uh, put out there was one of open debauchery and open mocking of not just faith or God, but specifically Christianity. And I think that is important to bring out and you hone in on this. Why do you think this is so important? And why is this, has this, to me, it's, it, it couldn't be any clearer, but there's some people that have kind of muddied the waters on this. Well, that's a big question. But first, let me just state that uh, sports, as you noted, should bring us together. And of course, the Olympics is like the ultimate uh, sporting event that should unite people, not just within the borders of a country, but around the world. Uh, but everything in our time has very sadly been politicized. So there's no escaping it. There's nowhere, there's no arena in the culture in which you are safe from political messaging, uh, usually from, from the radical left. And of course, as everybody knows by now, the uh, opening ceremony of the 2024 Olympics last Saturday was turned out to be very family unfriendly. Um, 28 and a half million viewers apparently watched this and uh, the organizers, the organizers, I guess, decided to just sever any connection with sports or athletic excellence or national pride and just instead promote the normalization of gender ideology and uh, anti-Christian bigotry. The show, as I'm sure a lot of people know by now, featured uh, a lot of gender ambiguous dancing and bearded drag queens, transgenderism, uh, a rather nightmarish performance by a headless Marie Antoinette. Uh, and of course, the worst part for Christians is blatant parody of Leonardo da Vinci's famous painting, world famous painting, The Last Supper, with Jesus and his apostles swapped out for a, a diverse squad of gender bending narcissists. Um, it's important because it's the culture, and the culture is everything that we swim in today. It's, uh, you know, the, the, as the saying goes, politics flows downstream from culture. And so the culture is where everything begins and it ends up, you know, being politicized. But but this is everything that we, uh, that we swim in. And a lot of Christians, I think, felt, well, okay, we were told anyway by some people in the media, <clears throat> I'll, I'll pick on The View specifically because I think Whoopi Goldberg said this, that it is a target-rich environment, Mark. <laughs> yes. Uh, Whoopi Goldberg told Christians or anyone who was offended by the uh, Olympic ceremony that they should just turn off the TV. Well, that's not enough. I mean, that essentially just means that we are buying into our own uh, marginalization in the culture. It means that we're not allowed to criticize when, when open bigotry is directed at Christians. Um, and we are being increasingly marginalized in the culture and reaching a point where I think we're 
going to move beyond what you could call soft persecution and into the harder kind that Christians are facing in less civilized places around the world. But that's why it's important. That's why the opening ceremonies of the Olympics were important, because the messaging was specifically anti-Christian. And I'll explain why, if I may continue to ramble. Uh, no, please do. There is a reason that, and you noted yourself, it was specifically anti-Christian, not just anti-faith, because, of course, Muslims weren't uh, offended by this. Um, Buddhists weren't targeted. Uh, in fact, I, I think you could go so far as to say this uh, performance was satanic. It was certainly demonic. And uh, I think you could see, uh, I mean, I can, you know, I'm going to digress here for a moment and point out that uh, over and over again in, in recent years in the culture, I think anyone who's been paying attention has seen increasing satanic symbolism or flat out open Satan worship in, in mm -hmm. uh, shows that are, are very widely viewed, like award show performances, like MTV Music Awards and the Grammys and that sort of thing. Uh, so this is something that's beginning to dominate the culture as Christianity is just openly uh, targeted and marginalized. Um, so the organizers, they decided, you know, to promote this normalization of sexual perversion intentionally as kind of a message that, hey, we are queering the culture. Get used to it. We're here, we're queer, get used to it. And if I could just explain this for a moment, queering the culture is not about turning everyone gay. <laughs> Uh, queer doesn't mean quite what uh, it, 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 people of my generation used to think of the word. Queering now is what gender ideologues refer to when they talk about subverting and inverting the culture, subverting hmm. and inverting all societal norms, all our traditions, our morality, uh, religion, the nuclear family, every standard that supports Western civilization, which used to be called Christendom, must be deconstructed by these people and demolished so that they can erect a new collectivist utopia on its ruins. And mm. that's what queering is about. It's, and that's what the messaging was of this opening ceremony was we're going to queer the culture. It had nothing to do with sports or athletic excellence or any of that. Um, the uh, Olympics organizers, I think, were taken a little bit aback by the degree of outrage that was expressed on social media. But then they issued a kind of a perfunctory non-apology in which they said, you know, gee, we're sorry if anyone was offended. Mm -hmm. uh, the artistic director claimed laughably that he did not intend to be subversive or to mock. Oh, pardon me. <laughs> Just lost my, uh, oh, my screen here. And it uh, happens to the best of us. Yes. Um, he claimed that his intention was not to mock or to shock, but of course it was. Mm -hmm. Of course it was. No one believes that. No one believes his statement, at least of all himself, I think. His deeper intention was to normalize this anti-Christian, anti-family, anti-Western worldview. Yeah. And I, I think that can't be overemphasized because immediately I heard the apologists come out, including some surprising voices, where you have people that are specifically, um, again, kind of uh, explaining it away. And I hear this uh, again and again when we're talking about the open satanic imagery. We had here in our own home state of Salt of the Earth, Iowa, we had a literal, like uh, an altar to Satan set up in the state house. And it was to prove a point. We, we kind of talked all about that. And the outrage is part of the point. The outrage and the backlash is is to say, look at these crazy Christians, you know, look at how they, and yes. they they try to, to prove kind of a, a um, you know, what about ism and use yeah. that to push their agenda. So there is part of that that is just one epic troll. But then there's also a much deeper and much more insidious, nefarious agenda at play here. And I'm very glad that you're being open about this. I think there were some Christians that were confused as to how to respond because they understand the offense that's happening. And mm -hmm. then they don't, they're being also told that they need to shut up, sit down, be tolerant. You're misunderstanding, you silly backward, uh, you know, 21st century America. You just, you just be quiet. It. You know, if you don't like it, it's because you don't understand it. You haven't done the work to understand it. Don't you know that it was a Bacchanalian representation? It was supposed to be a parody of Diogenes. You know, don't you know? And I'm not sure that that makes it any better, number one. Uh, but number <laughs> two, it's also not true. 
specifically and yes. intentionally and according to the the performers that were making their statements according to the, the titles of the scripts they were openly proclaiming that this was supposed to be the last supper on the set it was a, a new yes. interpretation of this that featured not only men in beards and and dresses and uh, you know people that are openly mocking and openly subverting god's design for sexuality but one thing i haven't heard talked about was that there was a child a literal child in the front, obviously partaking in all of this. And to me, that is, that's the bullseye of all of the, the most damaging parts of this is just like the, that gay men's choir saying a couple of years ago, supposedly in jest, we're coming for your children. And yes. I don't know, do you remember that, Mark? That And oh, that yes. was something they, again, we were the crazy ones for noticing. They do the crazy things, I, and we're the crazy ones for noticing. First, they say it's not happening, that we can't believe our lying eyes. And then they tell us, oh, yes, I suppose it is happening, but what's your problem? Uh, yes, exactly. Look, Christians in America and in the Western world, generally speaking, need to understand that this conflict goes beyond politics and even culture. We are engaged in spiritual warfare, and we need to gird ourselves with the full armor of God and go to battle, or we will find ourselves even more marginalized in the culture than we already are becoming. And as I alluded to earlier, we will begin to face persecution that's not just of the soft cultural kind where we're mocked openly um, at, in Olympic ceremonies and by the co-hosts of The View, uh, but the kind that, as I said, the kind of hard persecution that Christians are facing elsewhere. Now is the time to stand up and fight for our faith and push back. Um, it's not enough for us to simply turn off the TV or to say, uh, you know, I don't care what they say in Hollywood or I don't care what kinds of movies they, I, you know, I haven't been to a theater. I hear this a lot from conservatives uh, and from Christians is they have turned their backs on popular culture. And this is this is why the left owns the culture, because we turned our backs on the culture a long time ago mm -hmm. and considered it frivolous or, um, you know, unimportant in the grand scheme of things. Or we found it easier to just, you know, turn off the shows that offended us. But now it's reached the point where the left owns the culture. They own the news media. They own education. They own the entertainment arena. And um, they're coming for Christian conservatives. Uh, it's been mm -hmm. happening for a long while. We cannot allow ourselves to be squeezed out of pop culture. I do see a pushback um, from a lot of Christian conservatives, and I see the beginnings of something that I think is absolutely necessary, which is a, a parallel culture. In other words, Christian conservatives are beginning to um, create their own routes into the culture. They're beginning, beginning to create their own cultural um, outlets and production companies, and I think that's absolutely necessary. Um, so I'm happy to see that kind of thing happening. But Christians, generally speaking, even though we we don't want to be of this world, we do live in this world and we have mm -hmm. to make our way in it. And um, so we can't ignore um, something as all pervasive as pop culture. Yeah. And I think we're the only ones that have seemed to be confused about that for a long time. I'm glad to see this sort of wake up call. I do believe that one of the greatest gifts that we have being made in God's image is his creativity and that we can express what he's the great good news that he's given us over and over again in so many, in as many ways as there are people. Every person has a story. We love the story. Our, our God gave us his story and all of history points to him. So why can't we use the gifts he's given us in creative ways? I think the problem with Hollywood isn't that it was designed to be a cesspool somehow, same thing with government, is that we we retreated. Our strategy had been to not confront and yet retreat. Yes. <laughs> the brave Sir Robin bravely ran away. And here we are in this position um, where now we've got to work twice as hard even to be heard because we've been yes. silenced by our own consent, unfortunately. Now, there are many Christians speaking up, and I will say, just to pivot quickly, that there are lots and lots, many, many more Christians speaking up now in light of the news um, that I've just seen today about a, a horrible situation where you had a male boxer who was oh. allowed, turning back to the Olympics, who, were, who was allowed to compete in the female, um, in the female games. Yes. And so dramatically and so deeply beat his female opponent as in literal beating like punched yeah. to the face of the italian boxer that she crumbled and it was like 45 seconds it was some unheard of just dramatically short time and her words were it's not fair 
It's not just, this isn't right. Like it's totally different to box against a female versus a male. And we're looking at this as people who call reality our home. And we're thinking, of course, who would allow this to happen? Of course, it's unfair. Of course, it's unjust. But if you buy the lie, if you buy the lie that men and women are interchangeable or that he is a she, then there's no distinction that you can make. And therefore, there's no protection that's offered for women who deserve to have. I mean, think of all the, the female boxers that are now in a position of literal oppression because they've elevated a man to take the place of the woman. It's, it's not fair. And yet we have no ability to speak truth or to speak reality into this because we've abdicated that position. Yes, we've advocated it. Um, and the left has known for upwards of 80 years that the culture is, is so important. I mean, that's, that's what cultural Marxism is about. Uh, the Western cultural elites now who run everything are cultural Marxists, whether they would acknowledge that or not. And cultural Marxism, just to define it real quickly, because I, I've met a lot of conservatives who don't really understand what it is. And people mm -hmm. on the left say it's just a conservative boogeyman. There's no such thing as cultural Marxism. There is cult such a thing, and it has an intellectual history. Um, cultural Marxism is basically the application of this Marxist paradigm of oppressor versus oppressed, mm -hmm. not just in the field of economics where socialism and communism fail spectacularly, but to the culture where this kind of paradigm is spectacularly effective. Uh, and by effective, I mean that the cultural Marxists have understood for 80 or more years that politics flows downstream from culture, and they've spent that period of time infiltrating and subverting all the institutions and organs of the culture. Uh, and so the result is what we're seeing today, which is a culture that embraces this sort of gender ideology madness so that you have male boxers beating up on female boxers and people supporting it, people on the left supporting it because it suits their, uh, their agenda. It's a culture, uh, the, the, the cultural Marxism is basically uh, a, 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 an anti-Christianity, anti-nuclear family, anti-capitalist um, ideology with all the, uh, that is opposed to all the elements that have made us the greatest civilization in history. Uh, and th so that's the culture that we have now is one that's inverted to the point where uh, someone who practically defines normal, like J.D. Vance, is now being smeared as weird so we live in a topsy-turvy world now because, as you said, we have abdicated our responsibilities in the culture. We weren't even aware that it was going on until it was too late. And so now this is the kind of culture we uh, that we're up against and that we have to push back on. Yeah, he's not the one dancing around naked in blue paint in, in the streets in front of 28 million people. Weird, not, huh? <laughs> that's so weird. So I weird. Know. He actually believes in family and marriage and, you know, children <laughs> as the future. That's so weird. What a nut job. <laughs> you know what? I'm proudly weird. I am happily one of the peculiar people. Some of us are just more peculiar than others. That's all I yes. can say. Some of us had a head start. Mark Tapson is our special guest here listening to FaithWorks Live. So what do we do, I guess, is the big question. I think Christians are conflicted moving forward about how best to engage the culture. And some of us have started kind of turning inward. I've seen, I've been rebuked, actually, about this topic and my speech on this topic. So we'll see if Mark agrees, disagrees, and how we can move forward. Because if this is the state of Western civilization, I think we're kind of looking at the, you know, the ash heap of history is on the next exit. So we need to turn about, we need to figure out a way off this crazy train and back towards reality. God willing, he is good. He's still on the throne and he gave us today. So let's see if we can do some good with it with Mark Tabson when we come back. You're listening to FaithWorks Live. In today's world, security has never been more vital. And at FaithWorks Live, we're proud to partner with Veriguard Security. It's a professional physical security service, and they're really raising the bar in security and private investigations. Whether you need a team of professional officers to protect what you have worked hard to build, or their mobile security units for multiple properties or large locations, from business or corporate properties to your home or neighborhood, perhaps you've got an event coming up, they secure quality security coverage for events large and small because it's about peace of mind and protecting you, your family, your team, and your property. Settle for nothing less than the best when it comes to your security. You shouldn't have to compromise. When it comes to security, you can trust Veriguard. Contact them today at veriguard.us. That's V-A-R-A guard.us. 
For security service, you can trust Veriguard. There's no better time than now to stand for life. And you can stand with Iowa's original pro-life organization, Pulse for Life. They're the longest standing nonprofit pro-life organization in Iowa, and they're dedicated to informing, educating, and inspiring a new generation to value the sanctity of all human life from fertilization until natural death. They serve at the State House, they educate in classrooms, at events, they proudly serve on the coalition of pro-life leaders. They are on the front lines of the battle against this throwaway culture of death that we see all around us, and we are winning ground. Hearts and minds are changing, and the pro-life movement is continuing to grow. And you can be a part of the exciting things that are happening right here in our own backyard at pulseforlife.org and get your finger on the pro-life pulse. Sign up for their newsletter, find ways that you can make a difference and how you can change hearts and minds with their pro-life apologetics course, pulseforlife.org. So glad you're with us. You picked a good one. Mark Tapson is our special guest, and he is the Shulman Fellow on Popular Culture for the David Horowitz Freedom Center. Um, you should check out his uh, all of his work at uh, Front Page Mag. He's also a podcast host in his own right. And so after you're done listening to this show, go listen to all of his episodes. <laughs> just just listen in. About, they call it binge watching. I don't know if there's like binge listening. I don't know if that's healthy or not, but I probably do it. Uh, so consume at uh, and take notes upon the great content of Mark's analysis. And we're talking about not only the outrage over the Olympics and the depravity on full display, and yes, your eyes were not deceiving you. I mean, honestly, I think as Christians, we have to learn to trust the um, the educated instinct. We have to learn to trust the spirit at work. If we know we're in a spiritual battle, I've heard it put this way, if we know that there are dragons, then why should we be surprised if we see the dragons are roaring? That kind of thing. Like, we're the only ones that seem to be surprised by this. Our enemy has been prowling, and as he always has from the beginning, he's seeking to lie, kill, and destroy. So let's just get biblical about this. We're supposed to armor up and get engaged in this fight. As maybe we've been sitting on the sidelines for far too long. We might be a little bit fumbly, but we've got the same sword and the same shield and the same gospel and the same Lord overall. So let's go too. Like, let's just get about our mission. But the question is, what does that look like? And Mark, I think I've seen probably two pretty common reactions. One, the, the kind of like, we're on that same wavelength, like what on earth? This is, this is shocking. You know, this, is depravity on full display. Uh, Y'all need Jesus. Let's get about preaching Jesus. You know, that kind of more traditional kind of, I would say, common sense view. Even if you're not a Christian, you look at that and you're like, ugh, that's not suitable. That's not beautiful. That's anything but. It's just pushing a point. It's 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 gag worthy in that instinct because they're trying so hard just to preach their version, their false religion, their version of reality. Um, and that's just not it doesn't match the truth. And I think yeah. instinctually we know that. But then there's another group that says you, you guys are just not being nice enough. Jesus would have invited all those people to the table. Jesus would have loved those people. And I would say, yes, Jesus would love them, but he also would have called them to go and sin no more. He also would have called them to repent of the perversion that they're engaging in when that's going to lead to their own destruction. So, I mean, rather than just unload, because I've got a full rant ready to go, but Mark, I would love to hear your response. So if somebody, and I'm sure you've seen this type of reaction that says, well, we should be kinder in our response. We shouldn't be out uh, condemning this. We should be, you know, the type of people that are more tolerant and accepting and understanding because that's what Jesus would do. What say you, Mark? Well, I think we've tried the nice way and uh, you can see what's happened. Uh, And it's just going to get worse. I mean, the other side is just going to push harder and harder. And the reason that they know that they can uh, put on a display like they did at the Olympics is because they know that Christians are a fairly toothless enemy. Uh, They know that they can push and push. They would never in a million years contemplate doing a similarly offensive display uh, or a display that was similarly offensive to Muslims. Never in a million years. Mm -hmm. But they know Christians are a soft target and Christians are really their primary enemy in terms of uh, eradicating the kind of morality that they want to dispense with altogether. Uh, So as far as tolerance and inclusion goes, um, I think this is one of those, I think we're facing the kind of situation in which um, Jesus would do one of his episodes of overturning the tables in the temple. Uh, I think this is one of those, we're facing the kind of thing where Jesus would go off on Mm -hmm. uh, the kinds of uh, satanic displays that we're seeing. And I think Christians need to do likewise. 
And what does that look like, as you said? How do we how do we respond? I mean, it's not enough just to go on social media and complain because then we get nothing but, as I said, the perfunctory non-apology. Right. Things continue. There are various ways to approach this, um, but it's a little difficult for people who don't own movie studios or publishing companies to turn the need, you know, to move the needle of the culture. It's it's hard to know how to do that. The first thing you can do that everyone can and must do is speak the truth. Because today, speaking the truth is actually a very risky <laughs> um, strategy to undertake, but it's absolutely necessary. Speak mm -hmm. the truth about gender ideology. Speak the truth about men and women. Speak the truth about God. Um, speak, stand up and speak the truth. That's the first place to begin. And that will be difficult enough for a lot of people because mm -hmm. there will be consequences for that. You know, if you stand up and speak the truth in a school board, um, the FBI considers you a domestic terrorist and they put you on a watch list. So, you know, you might lose your job. You might lose a few friends. Um, you might get, quote unquote, canceled. Uh, so speaking the truth sounds like a very simple way to start, but it's actually, it, it, it takes courage. But courage is contagious. And you will find if you speak the truth that there are a whole lot of other people who are, uh, who are at your shoulders and by your sides who, want, who are just waiting for someone to give them approval to also be courageous. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one place to start. And then when it comes to the culture and moving the needle, as I mentioned earlier, there are a lot of people now, a lot of uh, culture producers among conservatives and Christians uh, who are going about things independently. Hollywood's not the gatekeeper anymore. Um, you don't have to do that. There are lots of filmmaking centers now that are out that are independent of Hollywood and outside Hollywood. I live just outside the Dallas area, and there's kind of a flourishing um, film industry that's going on here, and it's largely conservative. Mm. And there are other um, areas like that, too, other centers of cultural production. You're seeing that happen more and more often. Support those people. Support those films. This is not to say you have to support bad art. If, if our side makes bad movies, don't waste your money. You know, we mm -hmm. need to be challenged to make good art. We don't want to just uh, hit people over the head with political messaging like the other side does. Right. We want to entertain. But but the best stories are conservative anyway. The best stories are conservative and Christian. They're about heroism and redemption and, you know, and, and, uh, um, uh, and, and you know. What's good like, and true yeah, and noble like and just. That. That's yeah. the best storytelling. So all we have to do is do that the kind of storytelling that we we know how to live and that we believe mm -hmm. in. And it will attract people and it will create, it will result in good art. But support yeah. those people. Uh, I had Kevin Sorbo, the actor, um, on my podcast recently because he's put out a children's book, a couple of children's books, actually. Um, that sort of thing, you know, find people who, or Kirk Cameron is another well-known former um, Hollywood star who is doing children's books, support those people, support conservative speakers, uh, Christians, um, just find ways to support those people in the culture, uh, because that will, that will snowball. Mm -hmm. uh, and conversely, reject the demonic kinds of entertainment that really dominates out there. I mean, I'm one of the few people I know anymore who still continues to have a Netflix subscription, but it's partly because I'm a culture critic. I, you know, yeah. I have to watch these things so you won't. Sure. Um, so, I, and I can tell you that it, it just, it blows my mind to just look at the fare that's offered on Netflix and just look at one demonic imagery after another. And I've watched a lot of thriller films and some horror flicks and things. And, and the, and I'm telling you, Satan is real mm -hmm. and he is working through some of these entertainment outlets. Um, and it's uh, it's a it's a scary thing. Keep your children away from that. Protect your children like the precious things they are. Keep them out of the popular culture. Mm -hmm. I homeschool my five kids. My wife and I homeschool our five kids um, and. I urge everyone to do that. I know most people are not in a position to do that. I'm actually pretty blessed to be able to do that. Most people are not in that position, so I don't fault them at all for that. But if at all possible, uh, you know, sever the connection between your kids and pop culture because it's in a bad place and mm -hmm. it's coming for your kids. Yeah. Um, 
So right, and we're not we're not fear mongering by saying that either. We're not conspiracy not. theorists. They're yep. they're op more open than ever before. They're yes. literally dressed up in devil costumes and saying we're coming for your children. Take, I don't know how much more obvious it could be. Just take a look at drag queen story hour. Have you yeah. ever seen anything that's more openly demonic and uh, geared toward the uh, sexualization of children? Mm -hmm. I mean, these aren't the drag queens of uh, you know um, some like it hot, you know, uh, or uh, <laughs> You know, who is Walter Matthau and uh, uh, what's who are the stars of Some Like It Hot? But you know that they, not they're not the drag Jack queens Lemon. anymore. Jack, Jack Lemon, Lemon, thank you. Yep. Yeah, you're welcome. It, it's not drag queens like that anymore. Or Benny right. Hill. These drag queens are they look like something straight out of a nightmare, and that's intentional. It's because they're demonic. Mm -hmm. um, it's demons at work in the culture, and they're targeting yeah. your children. So it is not fear mongering. It's right there out in the open, as you said. Right. And God has given us the authority over those types of things as well in our households, in our hearts, in our culture, in, in our neighborhoods, in our schools, in our churches, all of those things. I think we step back and we think either our voice doesn't make any difference or we're afraid of offending people because, again, we believe that, oh, you know, we just have to go along to get along, which is not true. And Christian, if you believe it, please please. It's just, it's not worth it. Whatever they have to give you uh, for buying your silence and your compliance is not worth it. What would you give in exchange for your soul, in exchange for your children's souls? This is my, like, this is my stump speech. So if I sound taller, it's because I'm on a soapbox, Mark. The This is the thing we cannot get wrong. This is the thing we cannot give up is our children's innocence, is the future for our kids. We have to stand up on what's right and wrong. Not who cares what they do to me, but they need, my, my children deserve to be protected. I've been given an internal mission from God to raise them right in the nurture and admonition of the Lord and to care about other kids as well. And the future of the, like, they deserve the same preservation of their innocence, the same instruction in what's right and what's wrong, good for life, good for flourishing. That's what God's plan is. So either we're scared of the culture, which we shouldn't be, we're confused about what's happening, which hello, it's obvious. Or third, we don't really believe in the power of Jesus Christ the way we say that we do. Because if we believed in that story, we would live like it. If we believed in that power, if we believed in the power, not only of, of you know, the, the redemption aspect as well, but also the power to judge the same Lord is, is love, is love personified, the love that rescues, the love that saves, but he is also the, the coming King who's going to judge the quick and the dead. And, and we should not be confused about any of that. And the fact that the world is confused shows that we have a mission that we have neglected for too long. And yes, it begins in our own hearts, in our own houses, and in, in the lives of our own children. We need to be the example that they see. And there is nothing wrong with putting up the smartphone, putting up the gate and saying no phones mm -hmm. in here, because that's, I think, the, the um, Achilles heel that we have all the time yeah. is that we have technology with us all the time. And it's a mm -hmm. window to anything that Satan wants to put in your head. It can also be used for great things it's a it's a tool but more sure. often than not temptation is going to look pretty interesting and you just open that little window and scroll away and before you know it it is it happens just like that with people of any age but especially with kids so why yeah. not bring back like the family room why not bring back like there's one tv in the corner of the room and we can choose what we watch we can you know there's one computer <laughs> in the room like i mean let's apply this practically speaking no other generation has had this particular temptation but every other generation has known what to do when a threat comes for their children they protect and that's where we have to be mama and papa bears mark are you with me absolutely oh i'm <laughs> right there with you so is my wife she is yeah. uh, she's the same way Rock on. Well, from one homeschool family to another, uh, represent, rock on, keep the faith. <laughs> yeah. We're over here with six at Haney House, and it is not oh. easy, um, but it is, it's so worth it. And I don't yes. think there's anything else we'd rather sacrifice for. That may not be everybody's story, but it's an increasing number of people's stories mm -hmm. because we cannot continue to allow the culture to raise our kids. Is it, is it Vody Bauckham that says we send our children off to Caesar and are surprised that they think like Romans? Yeah. It's it's that idea. And if you're a Christian, if you are a person who believes that children deserve better, we have to give them better. And there's nothing I I would rather sacrifice for than um than than that.
than their minds, their hearts, their souls, because that's that's literally what we're talking about. Mark, it has been a true honor to have you with us. I have learned, been I've learned and grown through our time together, and your influence is one that I I recommend so highly. Um, oh, I, I think you're such a thoughtful uh, analyst in the way that you present things, and I appreciate your boldness in this area, especially like I said, there's a. A, a temptation sometimes, especially among very intelligent people, to try and um, nuance their position. And before you know it, you start equivocating and then even compromising. So thank you so much for being bold about uh, telling it like you see it in a very thoughtful way. Oh, thank you. I'm, I'm honored, as I say. Well, we will link to your article on the Olympics below. Also do everything that you're doing at Front Page Magazine so people can check out all your fine work. And uh, from all of us here in Iowa to you or wherever you're listening, thanks again. Thank you. God bless you for listening. Uh, it's kind of tough to realize what you're up against, but um, I'm probably only at first. Like this is just, it's a reality check for all of us. So I call this an armor up conversation. If this has motivated you, which frankly, I don't know, I'm fired up. So maybe I'm just built different, but I, I'm fired up. I'm ready to go. Lord, show me. It's it's today. It's his. And we are all immortal until we've accomplished what he has put us here to do. So you shouldn't be afraid. Do not be afraid for he is with you. Don't be discouraged. We have the option right now. We have the ability to serve right now. And you can be an influence that will make an impact for you, for your family, for your kids, for your neighborhood. You don't know how far your light will shine. Just standing up and saying, no more crazy. I'm with the God of reality. You know, he's God. I'm not. I'm going to do things his way because it's so good. It's so good, y'all. <laughs> he's the author of life and he tells us how to live for abundant life and flourishing. He is the way, the truth, and the life. So let's live like it. Thanks again to our special guest, Mark Thompson. And until next time, our mission, should we choose to accept it, is to love God, to serve people, and to live free. Thanks for listening to Faith Works Live.